This is the First and Big Ten Podcast with CNHI sports writers Kevin Brockway and Elton Hayes. It's time to talk college football. Welcome to the First and Big Ten Podcast. Kevin Brockway from CNHI Sports Indiana with Elton Hayes from CNHI Sports Pennsylvania. And uh, Elton, a, a pretty good week six here. And uh, I guess the big story of the week is Michigan getting its mojo back, at least defensively, uh, in the big ranked matchup with uh, Iowa. Michigan uh, beating Iowa 10-3, to holding uh, the Hawkeyes to just one yard rushing, 206 total yards, and picking off Nate Stanley three times. Yeah, no, um, I believe Jim Harbaugh described this as a defensive uh, masterpiece, which is one way of looking at it. Um, But yeah, you know, Nate Stanley entering that game had thrown 139 consecutive passes without a turnover. Uh, He broke that streak um, in his fourth pass attempt of the game. Uh, Michigan ended up uh, recording two more turnovers throughout the duration to secure the win. But yeah, um, this could have gone either way for Michigan. A loss here would have really um, just kind of put them behind everything in terms of uh, just the national message and their season. But for them to uh, pick up a win like that kind of keeps their Big Ten uh, hopes alive. Well, you know, they were at home. They fed off the energy of the crowd, I thought. But really, uh, you know, Don Brown is, is really, he, you know, he's, he's quite a defensive coordinator. And uh, when when you have uh, a team engaged like that, I had thought early in the season that Michigan's defense was kind of underperforming a little bit. And you wondered, as we've mm-hmm. discussed before, whether losing all those draft picks on the defensive side of the ball affected them. But uh, it looked like uh, – for a week at least, uh, the defense righted the ship. It did. Uh, eight seconds. mentioned earlier, a mere one-yard rushing on 30 attempts. Uh, obviously, sack yards go against that, but still, um, imp- impressive e- effort nonetheless. Okay, well, let's move on to uh, a situation that continues to be a mess. Uh, Rutgers, uh, in, in their first game uh, under uh, under their interim coach, uh, not uh, not very good. They lose to Maryland forty-eight to seven. I guess on the flip side, you could say Maryland is back on on track after two disappointing <laughs> losses. That's one way of looking uh, at it. But, yeah, uh, you know, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, some big plays in this day, this game. Anthony McFarland eighty yards for a touchdown. You had a uh, one hundred yard uh, kickoff return in this game as well. It was just uh, you know uh, one thing one thing after another uh, for uh, for for the uh, for the Terrapins. <laughs> No, if you're if you're a Maryland fan, um, you know this is exactly what you needed to kind of uh, you know snap that two game losing streak. You the Rutgers team, which has a lot of uh, you know with Chris Ash being let go, and then the uh, news of the uh, players announcing that they're going to sit out the uh, rest of the season. Um, you know this kind of set up perfectly for a uh, Maryland bounce back game. Uh, Josh Jackson got back on track, two touchdowns. Um, uh, he was hurt this game, so it'll be interesting to see if he's um, it's a return. But uh, you know, this was this is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Terrapins. Uh, good forty-eight to seven win. Um, Anthony McFarland, their uh, star running back, eighty-seven yards rushing, two touchdowns on seven carries. Uh, very very impressive effort. Yeah, and Javon Leak, uh, that was the kid that returned the uh, kickoff hundred yards, and he also had you know five for sixty-five and two touchdowns. And uh, you know, uh, uh, Maryland is is a, a little bit of a hard team to figure, but uh, you know they'll. It is. Yeah, they'll be they'll be going to Purdue. Uh, you know, a really banged up Purdue team uh, next week, and uh, you know that will be uh, that that will be an interesting test because you know they'll still be on the road in that game. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, Purdue is really struggling. Uh, Wisconsin forty eight nothing over Kent State non conference game. No surprise here. Uh, Jonathan Taylor just keeps motoring along. Five more touchdowns, four rushing yards. <laughs> even what more can you say about him? You know, this is who he is. Um, you know, he's a junior now. This is his team. Um, very interesting to see him getting involved in the uh, receiving game a little bit. Uh, he pulled in his uh, fourth receipt, fourth touchdown catch of the year on an 18-yard pass from uh, Jack Cohn. But what continues to impress me is this is this uh, Wisconsin defense. Um, it was its third shutout of the season, um, first time since 1937 that that's happened. Um, the uh, the uh, Wisconsin defense ranks top in the nation in scoring defense. Is only allowing five point eight points per game, and uh, it also tallied eight nine sacks rather. Sorry, um, you know this past weekend. So Wisconsin is really showing in the West. It's a it's a one team race right now. Yeah, no question. And you know ninety two 
total yards they held Kent State to a really uh, just just a dominating performance and, and as you mentioned a, a dominating season for Wisconsin's defense which statistically is uh, among the tops in the nation and uh, we'll be looking forward to that Ohio State Michigan uh, Ohio State Wisconsin game at the end of the month that's going to be uh, that's going to be epic for sure definitely Purdue definitely carry Penn, a conference wide uh, implications yeah no question Purdue versus Penn State Elton you were at this game um Purdue really couldn't get much going Penn State 10 sacks got a lot of teams around this league with a lot of sacks and uh you know Purdue uh certainly uh you know had their struggles with Jack Plummer quarterback yeah well you know heading into this game uh we knew that Purdue was struggling on many fronts uh, you know, losing Elijah Sindelar, its starting quarterback, and Rondell Moore the week before didn't do it any favors. And, um, you know, a couple of guys were injured again on Saturday against uh, Penn State. Uh, this Penn State defense, you know, um, received a lot of um, <clears throat> hype this, this preseason by uh, head coach James Franklin, who said it was probably one of the fastest defenses he's seen all um you know throughout his tenure in uh, state college and it showed 10 sacks uh came one shy of tying the school record um i believe it held uh that defense held purdue to a negative 19 yards rushing and uh purdue got its touchdown there um 15 yard touchdown pass um uh, after a, a penn state turnover but other than that um you know penn state's defense had its way um for all 60 minutes yeah and how very impressive like effort by the defense <laughs> 14 carries and, you know, in, in college, you count sack yardage as, uh, uh, you know, rushing yardage minus <laughs> yeah. 65 yards on 14 carries in that game. It, it was a rough start for the, uh, for the uh, redshirt freshman. Uh, you know, you could, you could hope he only gets better from here, but uh, definitely, uh, you know, um, not, not an ideal environment for him to get his second start. Yeah. Of his career. And, uh, you know, Sean Clifford was sharp again, uh, 20, 29, three touchdowns, uh, Purdue secondary, uh, you know, still has issues. Uh, they couldn't stop the run either. Uh, Kane with 105 yards. It was just, you know, it's just a, a, a really tough situation right now for, for Jeff Brom and for a Purdue team that came into the season with high expectations. Definitely. And, uh, you know, for Penn State, that's about the uh, as, as best of an effort as you could get. Um, they scored touchdowns on their first four offensive possessions, kind of to the lull there. You know, in the second quarter and third quarter, uh, went five consecutive uh, drives and punted. But, you know, heading into this tough three-game gauntlet, which starts this week with a trip um, to Iowa, a home contest against Michigan, and then a road date against Michigan State, you know, definitely, um, you know, encouraging signs there and and what you need for momentum before you start this brutal, like I said, three-game stretch. Yeah, now we move on to Minnesota. Remains undefeated. The Golden Gophers, uh, 5-0. and uh, They beat uh, Illinois 40-17. to Illinois with a couple of uh, defensive touchdowns in this game. Uh, early uh, kind of hung around a little bit, but uh, couldn't uh, couldn't quite keep up with uh, Tanner Morgan, who again was uh, uh, efficient nine and seventeen, three touchdowns. Uh, Rodney Smith on the ground, two yards and a touchdown. PJ Fleck has the Golden Gophers right now playing really well. Yeah, no, he does. And um, you know, we we earlier this season we kind of talked about is you know Minnesota for real? Are they the beneficiary of uh, some lucky endings? But hey, they're five and zero right now, one of four remaining unbeaten Big Ten teams. And for them to get a big twenty three yard, uh, I'm sorry, twenty three point home win against this against the Big Ten opponent, just you know, is impressive. They are receiving votes. I think um, they have 80 right now, which puts them right on the cusp of that, uh, you know, 25 spot. So they've got a favorable schedule the next few games. Um, So, you know, it would not surprise me to see them crack the top 25 here in the next um, couple of weeks. Yeah, and, you know, Brandon Peters was hurt in that game. They had to turn to Matt Robinson uh, for the rest of the game for Illinois. And, uh, you know, this – these pass rushes in this league are just chewing up quarterbacks right now. I mean, it's a, you know, uh, a, you know, a, 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 a beware sign, really. It's, it's just such a, a physical <laughs> league. You're seeing a lot of turnstiles on the offensive yeah, you're line. Seeing a lot, you're seeing a lot of quarterbacks go down, which is uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, not good. And uh, Northwest team with, uh, you know, Hunter Johnson uh, struggling, they turned to um, their, uh, their backup quarterback, uh, but it didn't, it didn't work out as Nebraska. Pulls it out in the end. They win thirteen to ten. Um, again, another team where uh, an, another game where you know Nebraska kind of struggles, but they find a way to win. Yeah, definitely a uh, disappointing start to the uh, season for Northwestern. Just one season removed after you know appearing in the Big Ten championship game as the uh, West representative. 
Uh, they're 0-3 right now in conference, still seeking that first Big Ten win and 1-4 and overall. But um, made um, def- especially exceptionally difficult by the fact that I was playing with the backup quarterback in Aiden Smith, who was 19-32 to for 136 yards and one interception. You know, playing on the road in Lincoln definitely didn't do him any favors. Yeah, no question. And, uh, you know, uh, Wandale Robinson uh, with a really uh, nice all-around game uh, for the uh, – you know, this uh, freshman from Nebraska. I mean, Adrian Martinez was okay, uh, but they, uh, you know, get the, get the field goal at the end of regulation, Pickering with a, a clutch field goal, um, and uh, pull, out mm-hmm. the, pull out that victory. So it was a, a good job uh, for, uh, for the Cornhuskers. You know, they, they are what they are. They're four and two, and, uh, you know, there's, some, there's they something are. said for learning how to win. You know, sometimes – There is. There is. You know, you look at these other teams around the league that are struggling. I mean, their counterpart, Northwestern, this week – and uh, the fact that they're two and one in conference and four and two overall, uh, they're doing something right in Lincoln. No question. And Ohio State uh, in the horseshoe in prime time uh, pulls away and beats uh, Michigan State thirty four to ten. Uh, they're still rolling along. They're still cruising. Uh, Josh Fields, actually, uh, Justin Fields, actually threw an interception. Uh, for the first time this season. Uh, and, the earth stopped spinning for a minute there Saturday night. Yeah, exactly. Well, for the first time since high school, apparently. Like, he hadn't thrown one. Um, and uh, he was uh, – but but he was still sharp, 17-25, 206. J.K. Dobbins, 172 yards on the ground and a touchdown. And uh, really uh, just another, uh, you know, strong all-around effort against, against the ranked Michigan State team that came in number 25 in the country and that has given uh, Ohio State uh, a double in the horseshoe a little bit. Yeah, you know, I mean, well, you know, Michigan's offense struggles aside, Michigan State's, um, Michigan State's offensive struggles aside, Michigan State's defense has really been, uh, you know, has, has been formidable this year. Held Ohio State to just three points in the first fifteen minutes, which was a season low, I believe, for the Buckeyes. Um, however, uh, Ohio State was Ohio State in that second quarter. It um, erupted for twenty-four points and uh, two hundred ninety-six yards. Kind of, you know. Highlighted by J.K. Dobbins, um, he had a, I believe it was a 60-something yard run there that really shifted momentum into uh, the Buckeyes' favor. And uh, Ryan game kind of, you know, spoke on that and, and said that was the home run hit that the team needed to uh, yeah, get going. Yeah, 67-yard touchdown run. Uh, they also had a, uh, you know, a, a catch and run to uh, Farrell for 89. It was uh, big plays again uh, for Ohio State where they can just really uh, hit – on those, uh, you know, quick big plays and, and pull away from, and that's mm-hmm. what the one day is that's so far in Columbus and what's been effective. He has, and I mean, you know, the, just kind of looking at Ohio State again, the uh, Penn State game was a noon kick, so I was able to get back that evening and, you know, kind of do some channel surfing and look at some of the games, and one of the games I checked out was this Ohio State one, and just very impressive, you know, from top to bottom, all three phases. They, like I said, um, you know, I understand Clemson and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> Alabama might be ranked higher than them, but to me, Ohio State appears to be the most complete team at this point of the season. Yeah, and uh, like I said, that Ohio State-Wisconsin game at the end of the month is going to be really uh, fun to watch. So uh, when we come back, we will have our Thumbs Up and Thumbs Down segment. Kevin Brockway from CNHI Sports Indiana with Elton Hayes from CNHI Sports Pennsylvania for the first Big Ten podcast. Get the latest Big Ten, IU, Purdue, and Penn State football news by following the guys on Twitter. Kevin is at Kevin Brockway G1, and Elton is at EHDC12. Welcome back to the first Big Ten podcast. Kevin Brockway from CNHI Sports Indiana with Elton Hayes from CNHI Sports Pennsylvania. Uh, we are now in our thumbs up and thumbs down segment. Elton, a lot of good performances around the league. And I'm going to start with Michigan's defense, uh, obviously holding Iowa to one yard rushing, uh, picking off Nate Stanley uh, three times. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week, he was terrific. Six tackles, two and a half for a loss, forced fumble and a pass breakup. He was all over the place. They were swarming around the ball. And a much-needed win for the Wolverines, the defense stepped up. I, it's hard to argue against. Uh, Don Brown is uh, you know, well is highly respected among his peers in the profession. And, um, you know, he showed us why once again. Uh, this defense looks like it's finally starting to gel. I'm um, starting to learn, to learn to play with each other after losing some. Uh, once they do that, it's a scary sight. No question. Um, my first thumbs up of the segment is going to go to Wisconsin running back Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Taylor finished with 186 yards rushing on 19 carries. Uh, it was a 9.8 yards per carry average. 
five touchdowns. Um, and, you know, he is right now the uh, conference's best back hands down. Um, his He has 12 rushing touchdowns so far this season, which rank him first in the Big Ten. And he's just behind uh, Ohio State's J.K. Dobbins in yards rushing with 745. So um, Taylor continues to impress. Wisconsin continues to win, and he's going to get my first thumbs up. Yeah, you know, he is uh, really, uh, you know, he's, he's putting on that, uh, you know, Heisman campaign. You know, a running back hasn't won the Heisman since uh, Adrian Peterson in 2012. And maybe this is the year a running back breaks through. It, it wouldn't surprise me. No question. And uh, so uh, our second thumbs up is uh, my second thumbs up, uh, excuse me, is going to go to uh, Maryland uh, return man Javon Leak. 100 yard uh, kickoff return for a uh, touchdown turned uh, special teams uh, player of the week honors. I kind of bobbled it a little bit, but then uh, recovered and uh, ran past uh, uh, what maybe you could call a a Rutgers uh, coverage unit there. But uh, no doubt uh, it's still impressive when you bring one back for 100 yards. And uh, as we alluded to, also uh, two touchdown uh, rushing as well, uh, 65 yards. So, Chivon, my second thumbs up for the week. No, he was definitely a a much-needed spark for that Maryland offense. Uh, You know, Maryland's kind of rotated him and McFarland in there and back there at running back. But he also showed that he could get it done in the return game. So I have no problem with you giving him that. It was well-deserved. Um, my second thumbs up of the week is going to go to, I'm going to keep it in the, uh, running back camp here, uh, Ohio state running back JK Dobbins, you know, his name earlier this year was kind of, um, mentioned in terms of, uh, you know, dark, not, not dark horse per se, but, um, you know, I guess people on the cusp of, uh, contending for a Heisman in the big 10. And he kind of showed the, uh, the country while on Saturday, uh, 172 yards and one touchdown on 24 carries. Like I mentioned before, his 67-yard second-quarter touchdown run really swung momentum in Ohio State's favor and put them up by 14 points. I was going to say, Elton, you know, um, the um, the Big Ten Network did a really interesting uh, kind of a, a, a documentary on him and um, Adrian Martinez and some of the struggles that uh, J.K. Mm-hmm. Dobbins went through. I don't know if you watched it. Uh, growing up in LaGrange, Texas, his father was in jail and passed away in prison, and He's really a, a compelling story for him to, uh, you know, raise in a single parent family uh, to uh, achieve what he's managed to achieve uh, in Columbus has been fairly impressive. No, I, I did not see that, but I definitely would like to um, check that out. Yeah, he was so, it, you know, that's, he's well deserving of all the goodwill that comes his way. Yeah, he was. Uh, it, it's 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 a very uh, it was very well done by the Big Ten Network. I would definitely recommend people watching it. Uh, my third thumbs up is going to go to Wandale Robinson. Uh, who was all over the place for Nebraska, Uh, seven uh, catches for 123 yards receiving, uh, seven uh, rushes for 44 yards and a touchdown. He was Big Ten freshman of the week. He was all over the place, really big offensive spark and uh, what Nebraska needed to pull out that win over Northwestern. No, definitely. With Adrian Martinez, you know, kind of being hurt and not playing up to his potential, Wondell Robinson was a difference maker. Uh, Let the team in rushing and receiving and was uh, just a key part of that victory. So I, I um, definitely agree with you on him getting your uh, thumbs thumbs up of the week, your third one. My third thumbs up of the week is going to go to Penn State uh, defensive end Shaka Tony. Uh, Penn State in, uh, in its you know thrashing of Purdue won um, 35-7 and produced 10 sacks. Shaka Tony, uh, redshirt junior, um, was responsible for, t- for three of them. Uh, he upped his season total to five. And he's just been a very impressive uh, story so far. Um, defensive front led by Uter Gross Matos, you know, um, really just been dominant over the past couple of weeks. Uh, it started that run against Maryland and then kind of the attitude against Purdue. But uh, Tony really broke out in a big way. Uh, he had four sacks last week or four sacks last year against uh, Indiana and just came up one one sack um, shy of tying that record. But uh, for his uh, effort on Saturday, he'll get my uh, third thumbs up. Yeah, Penn State's uh, uh, you know, defensive front was just all over the place in that game. They didn't give Jack Plummer any time to throw. And uh, that will go to my first thumbs down, which is Purdue's offensive line. Uh, you know, Jeff Brom has discussed, uh, uh, you know, the Purdue's uh, issues in the trenches right now. Um, he's made some changes uh, this week that he's hoping will help in the offensive line. But right now it's just a mess. And, you know, when you don't give, uh, you know, your redshirt freshman quarterback uh, time to throw, 
Um, it's uh, it's a really big deal. And it, there were times too when Plummer held on to the ball a little bit too long, but for the most part, uh, he didn't really have much time to operate at all. No, definitely. Look, when you're operating at, you know, at a disadvantage with um, not having your full complement of players on your roster, you're going to need the ones who are on there to do their job. Um, that offensive line did not do so. Granted, you know, it went up against a very uh, talented defensive front, but a uh, disappointing effort all around for, uh, for the uh, Purdue offensive line. My first thumbs down of the week is going to go to Iowa quarterback Nate Stanley. Uh, three interceptions. Like I said, uh, I believe he had went, entered this game against Michigan not having thrown an interception in 139 consecutive pass attempts. Uh, he snapped that uh, on just his fourth attempt of the game and just really went downhill from there. Um, Stanley uh, Sr. is going to get my uh, first thumbs down of the week. Yeah, uh, he really struggled in that game. And, you know, he's been a pretty good performer for most of the season, but just couldn't figure out that uh, Michigan defense for sure. My second thumbs down is going to go to Michigan State's defense. And, um, you know, I I know they held Ohio State to three points in the first quarter, but uh, they really couldn't contain the big plays in that second quarter. They gave up 506 total yards. And, uh, you know, you look back in the week before also giving up, uh, you know, more than 300 yards to uh, Indiana, this was a defensive unit that we thought was going to carry this team. And uh, lately they haven't been carrying their weight. Remember early in the season, Michigan State's offense was a problem. Um, you know, they're still not scoring the ball great. They did against Indiana. Uh, we're held to 10 against Ohio State. But uh, Michigan State really needed the defense to kind of keep them in that game against Ohio State. And uh, they didn't answer the bell, I thought. No, it, it didn't. And um, like you said, you know, this was supposed to be the strong point of this team. And I, I, I'm still confident that it is. But I don't know what's been going on the last couple of weeks with um, with its performances. But, you know, it, it just I, I don't know if they're not getting off the field enough. I know Michigan State was four of 13 on third downs last week. So maybe that defense is getting worn out, but uh, it's going to do a better job than this moving forward. Uh, my second thumbs down of the week is going to go to Northwestern. Um, yes, disappointing season all, all across all fronts for the uh, Wildcats. Uh, one and four still seeking its first conference uh, victory. Just did not look good at all against Nebraska, which was not playing at its full potential. Um, a lot of concern. Um, you know, Pat Fitzgerald is a good coach. He's done great things there. He's really going to have to put it together and um, kind of reinvigorate that team to make it more competitive in the second half of the season. Yeah, you know, and they were counting on Hunter Johnson. There was a lot of hype, five-star recruit, but you could see why he flamed out of Clemson, uh, and now he's on the bench. Um, and and that, that's, that's kind of telling there. You know, sometimes guys can have those physical tools and those measurables, but uh, – you know what I think about recruiting uh, ratings, uh, Elton? Uh, I, I'm of the P.T. Barnum <laughs> philosophy. There's a sucker born every minute. Um, and uh, I don't uh, I don't put much, too much stock in them. I, you know, you, you get on campus, let's see what you can do. Uh, my third thumbs up, uh, thumbs down, excuse me, is uh, going to go to two guys who didn't play last week. Archer Sikowski, the quarterback from Rutgers, and Raheem Blackshear, the receiver from uh, <laughs> Rutgers. Uh, for deciding to redshirt and sit out. Now, this is uh, interesting. I'm kind of old school here, but uh, I know Chris yeah. Ash left and they signed up to play for Chris Ash and they didn't sign up to play for, uh, you know, the new coach, uh, Nunzio uh, Campanelli. But um, this, uh, to, to me, uh, you know, you, you don't abandon your team. You know, you, you stick it out. You find a way yeah. to do it. If you want the redshirt year, you're going to transfer anyway. I know that they could probably get yeah. a, a, a waiver to play right away, but why not just finish out the season, you know, take the, take the redshirt year the following year to get accustomed to your new school. Um, but uh, I, I've, I think this sends a bad message across all fronts here. I think you should play. Yeah. Well, you know, we kind of uh, got a preview of this a few weeks ago with uh, the Houston situation with the Eric King um, and another, I forget the other gentleman's name down there at Houston. But uh, this is the new trend. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I'm from the school of thought where, you know, you sign up to play with these guys. These your teammates. Don't abandon them midseason. And uh, I just don't, uh, you know, it, it's one thing if you want to transfer, um, you know, that you're right. You have, the, you have the right to do what's in your best interest. But I don't know if going about it this way is necessarily in the best interest for the – okay. Um, my final thumbs down of the week is going to go to Illinois' defense. Uh, very underwhelming season for uh, Lovey Smith. Um, you know, allow, giving up 40 points to Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota rolled up 487 yards rushing. 
uh, 211 yards on the ground with one touchdown. And uh, Tanner Morgan uh, shredded it for uh, three touchdowns uh, against one interception. So uh, Illinois' defense and its 40-17 uh, to 17 loss to Minnesota is going to get my third thumbs down of the week. Yeah, just uh, really, uh, really struggled. And, uh, you know, Tanner Morgan has been doing that to a lot of teams. But uh, Illinois, we've discussed Levy Smith being on the hot seat uh, before, and it's, uh, it's not looking good there at all. No, it's not. And this was supposed to be a year that, you know, he brought in a, a few of these um, a few of these transfers. Um, you know, a couple of guys re- out of Florida were supposed to shore things up on the defensive side of the ball, and that just really hasn't been the case, you know, uh, five games into the season. Okay, coming up next, we'll have Ben Jones from statecollege.com on the First and Big Ten podcast. This is Kevin Brockway from CNHI Sports Indiana with Elton Hayes from CNHI Sports Pennsylvania. Don't go anywhere because it's time for Voices of the Gridiron. Here's today's special guest. Welcome back to the First and Big Ten podcast. Uh, today we have the pleasure of having State College dot com Penn State beat reporter Ben Jones join us. Ben's been on the beat for uh, close to a decade. So Ben, thanks for uh, taking time today and um, spending it with us. Yeah, not a problem. It makes me feel old uh, hearing that, but it it, it, is, it is what it is. <laughs> cool. Well, look, Ed, uh, number 10 Penn State has a uh, really uh, interesting matchup this week against number 17 Iowa. Um, I understand you were out there the last time in 2017 when these teams two, when these two teams met. Um, that game was obviously decided in the last second on a Trace McSorley to Jawan Johnson touchdown. Uh, the rosters have changed since then. But do you see this game as having the potential to, again, be decided in the final seconds? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, anytime you have to travel to Kinnick uh, Stadium, regardless of what team you are or how good you are, is it's always a challenge. Um, I think it's interesting because, you know, Penn State goes into this game really, you know, they're 10th in the nation. But I think at the same time, this is sort of the game where we really find out, we begin to find out how good this Penn State team actually is. Um, so it could go one of two ways. It could be the kind of closed game like it was uh, two years ago, decided late. Um, although one of the weird things about that game is Penn State pretty much dominated in all of the statistical categories. Uh, they just couldn't quite get it into the end zone. Or you could have, uh, like when Penn State went to Iowa under Bill O'Brien, a similar sort of how good is this Penn State team feel, um, and they ended up blowing the doors off of Iowa. So I think it could go either way. I don't think Iowa is as good as they were when Penn State was last in Iowa City. Um, but, you know, you, you get you get that team in front of that crowd at night. Uh, nothing about that is a simple task. Okay. okay. Well, uh, <clears throat> through five games, this running back by committee approach seems to have worked well so far for Penn State. Um, the Nittany Lions played freshman Noah Kane and Devin Ford last week against Purdue, burning both of their red shirts. Uh, would you be surprised to see a freshman start a running back here in the next few weeks? Um, I mean, I, I think how they're running, it seems more a matter of when, not if, um, you know, I think Journey Brown, the, the old guy in the room has done a good, a good job for himself. I think Noah Kane, um, has probably made the best case that he should be the lead guy in that rotation, but Devin Ford, um, has also had his moments. It's really Ricky Slade is the only one that hasn't uh, really had a, a shining moment, if you will, to still from the, the basketball term, I, I think all three of them at least have had, uh, you know, moments to make a case for getting more carries. And I think that's sort of the weird situation that it puts Penn State in right now because I think ideally, you know, Penn State would like to have one or two running backs, but they've really got three, and they're all playing about as well. Um, so you can't justify cutting carries from some of these guys just yet. Um, but I think if you consider how well, you know, Devin Ford has run the ball, how well Noah Kane has run the ball, um, the odds are certainly uh, in their favor to have a freshman being that marquee guy um, and, and certainly, if anything is a sign of how things have changed around Penn State football, the fact that the starting running back uh, could be a freshman is, is certainly one of them. Hey, this is uh, Kevin Brockway from um, CNN Sports Indiana. I'm, I'm just curious about Sean Clifford. Uh, obviously, uh, played really well in that first, you know, road atmosphere at uh, Maryland. Uh, what does he carry over from that? Do you think uh, going into Kinnick, and, and how do you think the communication is going to be there between him and his offensive line and receivers? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the one thing that, that Penn State's done a good job is, is, you know, over the years really preparing for noise. And I think, 
to a certain extent playing in Beaver Stadium, even though it's quieter when they have the ball, you're kind of used to having uh, lots and lots of people looking at you while you play. Um, so, you know, I imagine, you know, it's always difficult when you actually go out there and actually do it when there's actually people there screaming in your face. But I think there's a sort of uh, a, a level, uh, a certain level of naive about this team when they go on the road that they kind of they're like oh this is very exciting we've never done this before and I think because of that they kind of embrace it differently you don't see it as an obstacle as much as a different fun environment to play in that doesn't mean Penn State will be able to avoid every false start or you know miscommunication that's that's bound to happen but I think ultimately their confidence and you know sort of the the comfort that they got from playing on the road at Maryland and doing it so well um, you know, certainly they won't be short on, you know, that similar kind of confidence going into this weekend. You know, watching, uh, you know, the game against Purdue last week, obviously the pass rush get out. Um, yeah, and they'll be facing a tougher offensive line uh, in Iowa than they were in Purdue. But but what do you think has made this pass rush particularly effective uh, at this point in the season? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things is just that there's so many options. I think you look back when Carl Nassib kind of had his breakout senior year a few years ago. The biggest thing about that was that he was one of many different guys on that line, and, and somebody, um, you know, somebody was going to get a double team, and somebody was going to be open. And Carl Nassib was that guy that had one-on-one matchups. I think if you look at Penn State's defensive line right now, there's so many guys that can get to the quarterback that you you have to pick your poison, sort of, you know, against Purdue. You know, Penn State just had a lot of good matchups. Like you said, Iowa. You know, Iowa is probably next to Wisconsin, one of those prototypical big bulky offensive lineman group. So it, it'll, it'll be a battle there. Um, but I, I think, you know, if you're going to have a week like Penn State did uh, against Purdue, that's probably the best way to head into a game like this, um, you know, to get your confidence up. Cause frankly, Penn State had gotten to the quarterback, but maybe not as consistently as they would have liked considering the talent that they have. Some of that is a lot of max protect. Some of that is just missing a few opportunities. So I think, you know, to steal a basketball phrase for them to see the uh, the ball go through the hoop, to see them get to the quarterback. Um, you know, these guys don't lack for confidence, but it's certainly a confidence boost to see it happen. Hey, Ben, the first five games, you know, what have been some of the biggest surprises so far for you about this Penn State team? Um, I think maybe I was surprised that Sean Clifford has been as efficient as he was. I figured he'd be good. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if I thought he would complete as many passes and throw for as many yards just simply because, you know, this is the first time in a long time that he's started in a game, the first time in a long time that he's really played. There's going to be on the road. There's going to be learning curves. That's why, you know, you have non-conference games against quote-unquote lesser opponents because it gives you an opportunity to get comfortable. Um, so I, I'm not surprised that Sean is good. I just think I'm surprised mm-hmm. that he has been as good um, right off the bat. Um, certainly there's some things that he has to work on, but ultimately, um, you know, I think he's come out and, and played with a lot of confidence and the two major mistakes that he has made so far this season uh, ultimately haven't cost him any. Well, Ben, thanks again for joining us. Uh, once again, we Ben Jones from statecollege.com, Penn State beat reporter. And, Ben, we'll see you in Iowa. All right, sounds good. Thanks for having me, fellas. Want to see more from Kevin and Elton? Subscribe to a CNHI newspaper near you. Welcome back to the First and Big Ten Podcast. Kevin Brockway from CNHI Sports Indiana. Without me, he's from CNHI Sports Pennsylvania. It's prediction time once again. Yeah. Got, my Rutgers we got was really bad week. last week, didn't it? You know? <laughs> but I did pick Michigan, though. That was, you know. You did. We, you did. Yeah. You did. So, I picked, well, one out of two so, is bad, right? Uh, but I believe you also picked yeah, Rutgers. Yeah, I did, though. Yeah, that Rutgers pick was terrible. I, well, what was I What was I thinking? <laughs> you know? I don't, yeah, I just don't. Maybe at home, I thought, with an interim coach, they'd be fired up. Yeah, but... Re, you know, re, renewed passion. You know, they've, they've got a new cause to fight for. But, um, you know, I, I can't fault you for it. I, I see where you were yeah, coming from. Yeah, well, it wasn't very sharp. But uh, speaking of Rutgers, uh, they're facing Indiana in Memorial Stadium. It's homecoming for Indiana. And the Hoosiers are a 20-point favorite. They're coming off the bye week. Uh, even though they lost to Michigan State in that game, they're feeling pretty confident because they played them pretty tough up in East Lansing. And, uh, you know, Michael Penix is healthy. Uh, you know, he's had an extra week to rest. And I, I think Indiana uh, goes away and uh, wins this game fairly easily. 
I agree. Uh, Rutgers has a lot of issues right now, and uh, you know I, I would be surprised to see uh, to see them win another game this season. So definitely got to like Indiana, especially playing at home after by, off the bye weekend for home. Yeah, and you know what's interesting, Kalen DeBoer has really done a nice job with the, the passing game. I, you know, I wrote about this today. And, uh, they're near the top of the Big Ten statistically in a lot of categories: third in yards, uh, first in completions, mm-hmm. uh, which is interesting. A lot of short. Is the Borsch offense, but it's really exploiting Michael Penix's uh, strengths, and even Peyton Ramsey is an accurate passer, and they've uh, they really done a nice job. Watt Fillier had 14 catches last game, really uh, getting it done through the air early in the season. No, it's been definitely impressive. Uh, you know, we we all know Tom Allen's known for his defense, but uh, to see him, you know, like you said, DeBoer to get in there and now kind of implement his offense and to see it pick up this quickly is really impressive. All right, we move on. Michigan against Illinois. Michigan with a little momentum with those back-to-back wins against Rutgers and uh, Iowa. And, uh, you know, we, we know Illinois is really struggling right now. And I think there are a lot of questions as to whether Brandon Peters, the former Michigan quarterback, will play after being hurt last week. Illinois is a um, – 21 and a half point underdog at home. Uh, I think Michigan wins this one going away. Uh, yeah, I think Michigan scores more than uh, 10 points and uh, it takes this one pretty easily. All right, we move on. Another homecoming game for Purdue. Uh, they're at home. They face Maryland. I still think this is an interesting game for as beat up as Purdue is. You know, Maryland still has to go and prove they can win in the road in the Big Ten. Um, and Purdue, yep. for as beat up as they were, they were competitive the last time at home against Minnesota. I know they were down three touchdowns, but they closed the gap. They came back. David Bell is a good receiver, and, you know, maybe Plummer, another game of, with experience. I'm kind of on the fence here, but uh, I'll go with the home state pick. I'm going to say Purdue is going to find a way to win this game. I have to agree with you on that one. Uh, Purdue, for a couple of quarters against Penn State, looked looked decent on defense. You know, I was uh, very impressed with the way they were able to get Penn State off the field there on uh, those five consecutive drives. Uh, still not that sold on Maryland. I think um, a couple of those wins early this season were fool's gold. Um, but we're going to see what Maryland's about. Uh, you just had a, uh, a road win, I mean, a road game in the Big Ten against a uh, Purdue team coming off a loss, which still has talent. So uh, I'm going to have to go with Purdue on this one. I think Purdue You know, wins. George Karlaftis, uh, he's been a really bright spot in what's been a, a, a difficult season, uh, four and a half uh, sacks on the year. You know, he had a sack in that Penn State game. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a guy to watch, uh, you know, now and for the future for the Boilermakers in terms of uh, his ability to get to the quarterback. He's been uh, – He's had he's had yeah. a nice freshman season. We move on to Michigan State against yes. Wisconsin. Um, you know, Michigan State coming off the loss to uh, Ohio State and it doesn't get any easier going to Camp Randall Stadium. Um, I, I don't see how Michigan State's going to be able to score on this uh, Wisconsin defense for as many struggles as they've had offensively. I like Wisconsin in this game. Yeah, Wisconsin's just playing at such a high level right now on both on uh, you know offense and defense. Uh, like I said, three shutouts on the season. I don't think they'll shut out Michigan State, but I think it'll be a pretty lopsided victory um, for uh, for the Badgers. We move on to Nebraska and Minnesota. Minnesota five and zero hosting the Huskers, <laughs> um, and Nebraska has uh, you know kind of found ways to win in the Big Ten recently. They haven't been impressive, but they've uh, you know found a way to scrape some games. Minnesota went through that, as you can recall, early in the season, but now they look like they're hitting their stride as a complete team. Minnesota's at home. It's going to be a kind of a, a chilly, uh, I'm sure, night game up there in uh, Minneapolis. I, I like the Gophers. Yeah, you know, I, um, I've learned my lesson against picking against the Minnesota. Um, I, they've, all they've done is win. Uh, they've been impressive in doing so. Tanner Morgan's playing some great football right now. Uh, the, like I said, the defense only gave up um, 17 points last week. Um, uh, Nebraska right now kind of, is kind of bipolar. Uh, you don't know which Nebraska team you're going to get on any given Saturday. Um, I don't like that inconsist- inconsistency. I believe Minnesota wins this one. Okay, and now we go to uh, the final uh, game on the Big Ten slate, a big one in prime time, 7.30 p.m., uh, under the lights in Iowa, an ABC, uh, ABC uh, televised matchup. Number 10, Penn State, against number 17, Iowa. Iowa, obviously, coming off the loss against Michigan. They'll be playing with a little more of a sense of urgency. They'll be at home. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. Penn State, as, as we said, has looked awfully impressive early this season, both offensively and particularly defensively, coming off the 10 sacks against Purdue. Um, Penn State is a uh, four-point favorite on the road. Um, I, I know what they say about taking road dogs. We're not going by the spread here. But uh, I think Penn State's going to find a way to win this game outright. Um, it might be closer than four points, though. 
I, I have to agree with you there. Uh, you know, I keep hearing, uh, I've always heard Kinnick, Kinnick Stadium is a uh, difficult task for anyone to go in there and try to uh, to conquer. Uh, Penn State's defense is playing just f- incredible football right now. The offense is doing well. Um, you know, it's not going to be easy. Definitely not going to be easy. I was going to be uh, motivated, especially off of that heartbreaking loss last week. But I think Penn State goes in there and um, takes the win and remains undefeated. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Elton, I don't know if you're going to go out to – Kinnick Stadium, but uh, the cool thing is uh, the Children's Hospital and uh, the uh, players waving yes. to the kids and the kids waving back. Uh, that's just a really heartwarming sight to see. It's a special atmosphere. Special atmosphere. I'm excited to get out there and experience it. Should be uh, should be wonderful. So uh, as we uh, you know uh, wrap up this podcast, Elton, uh, any thoughts? As we we've discussed last week, seeing a little bit of separation here. Ohio State still looks like the cream of the crop. Wisconsin is there, but you still have four teams in the Big Ten that are uh, undefeated, including Minnesota. You, you do. Um, I, I think right now what's really been um, impressive is just you know how one sided the West has been. I, I think it's Wisconsin and everyone else you know uh, playing second fiddle. Um, Wisconsin, the number eight in the country right now, playing at such a high level. Uh, I can't wait until that game later on this month where they uh, play Ohio State. But in the uh, in the East, it's Ohio State, and then I'm gonna have to say Penn State is a um, you know is a uh, favorite for second in the you league. Know, and the thing about Wisconsin is they've got serviceable quarterback play from Cone so far. He's been uh, he's been mm-hmm. good, and, and the defense has really been uh, tremendous. And I think that's what's what's really it, carried them is that they've you know last year was kind of like Jonathan Taylor. And everyone else, and this year they look like a more complete football team to me. Yeah, and and Cone is still young, you know. He's still kind of getting the hang of this. Does and um, you know that'll just further enhance that Wisconsin uh, offense. So the I think their best football is ahead of them. No question. Well, uh, it's going to be uh, quite a uh, quite a week seven, and uh, enjoy uh, you know beautiful Iowa City, Iowa. There, Elton, I'll be um, <clears throat> in Indiana at home uh, base. Uh, you know, facing Rutgers in uh, homecoming. So. Uh, Enjoy enjoy the uh, homecoming festivities. Yeah, Kevin. yeah, it'll be. You know, my uh, my friend from uh, Rutgers is actually coming for the game. Uh, my friend Cliff, and uh, okay, you know, it's gonna be uh, it's it's gonna be a long day for him. I think he's gonna have a hard time, but he he wants to take some pictures inside the assembly <laughs> hall, so maybe at least that'll cheer him up a little bit. There you go. That'll be his consolation prize. <laughs> All right. So for the uh, first and Big Ten podcast, this is Kevin Brockway from CNHI Indiana with Elton Hayes from CNHI Sports Pennsylvania signing off. Thanks for listening to your number one source for college football and Big Ten news. The first and Big Ten podcast. Enjoy the games.